Well, I just recorded this video and Camtasia decided not to save it. So, right, Joshua's asked a great question here is, right, all right, I have a strange challenge for you. Although your analogy of the kitchen paper makes me doubt the possibility, anyway, here's what I'm trying to do. I want to break a paper into four separate papers and I want to do that in such a way that they appear as quadrants. Now, I know I can make a four by four table and that's easy, but is there a way that I can make it so that when I reach the end of the top right quadrant, it will not expand but create a new 4x4 table on the next page and begin filling in that top right quadrant and same for top left, bottom right, bottom left. Basically I want to make four mini pages on each page that behave like mini word documents. What happens now is it tries to expand the table and As I reach the end, I know there are tedious amount of word rounds of this, making a bunch of tables, copying and pasting the right amount. But is there anything I can do so that word will do it, f do it for me? Yeah, tables are not dynamic in Word. I mean, you can set them that the, the row repeats, the header row repeats, and you can set them that the row will break across pages. So if you get to the end, it will create a new page, but then continue the table row. Um, but it's not dynamic in that sense. However, there is a workaround, okay? Does, it is a little bit kind of finicky to start with, but once you've got it set up, um, this will be the easiest way. And it does actually work, Joshua, okay? So what we need to do, we come across to Word, we're gonna do File New, and then we have our blank document, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm, just for the purposes of this, I'm gonna make this landscape. And I'm working with A4, okay? And we're going to set the margins because we want, I would imagine you want the most real estate. So we're going to set the margins as narrow. And if I zoom in, I can see that I've got 27 centimeters um, horizontally. And I've, it's, it's telling me I've got about 18 centimeters vertically, 18 and a half. Okay, so that's the kind of area that we're working in. Now you don't want to use tables for this because they're so limiting. They allow us to have precision in Word in terms of um, the positioning, but for something like this, they're not, it's not the best way to do it, okay? And what we're gonna actually use instead are um, text boxes. Now you need this show hide characters turned on because you need to see what you're doing in your document. It's always best to put a, one or two um, paragraph marks in place just so that you can actually see what you're what you're working with okay now if you want maximum real estate go into the header and footer and, and reduce your header from top header from bottom settings as well because that'll just give you a little bit more space as well um, if your normal style has given you spacing like this you might even want to put that down to zero and update and then add in a space like like so. But that's, that's what I'm gonna do initially because I just wanna show you how these text boxes work. They are a bit awkward, they do take some getting used to, okay? So once we're putting three build crows, my cursor's flashing on the middle one. And then what I'm gonna do, insert text box built in. And then Word throws it straight there on, on the page like so. Now as soon as I select this, you can see this anchor appears in the left margin. This is the object anchor, now it doesn't work exactly how you think or you'd like it to work okay but it's kind of there for a purpose and as i move this text box you can see that it's going to move with me now when i move it into the left margin it forces these pilcro these two pilcros to the right and that's because the wrapping is square okay now what we want on this one is we're going to put tight wrapping um sorry we're going to do top and bottom wrapping my apologies so that forces them below Okay, now if I come back to more layout options and I look at the text wrapping, reduce that to 0.1 or you can even go down to 0.05 if you want, but just play about with what you need and then you can just jig that a little bit with the, the, the up and down arrows, okay? But it's important that the, the anchor is in the top there. And then once we've got that, now our page size is, the width is 27. So I want approximately 13, 13 and a half. I'll just come below, I'll come to 13.3 to give myself a bit of space. And we know we've got about 18 here. Now I'm, I'm gonna go to, let's say eight and a bit. Now I'll, I'll just go to eight centimeters just to show you what we're doing here, okay? That's given me this size quadrant for my, 
for my first box. Now I copy control C, click away and paste down below. And now what I want to do is I'm just going to jig that into it. If you want to butt it up, you can, or you might want to give yourself just a, a slight gap. Now shift, shift click on both, and then on shape format, you can align on the top like so. Okay? And then control C from both, put my cursor below there, and now I'm going to just jig into place. Now I can see that left line is, is giving me it's telling me the alignment is there. So this should be pretty much there, and then I can just nudge the up arrow. And as you can see, I've got a bit of space now, okay, above and below. So if you want to make these a little bit larger, just so you've got one pill crow above and one pill crow below, you can. If, you're, if you really want to maximize the space, then what you could do is you could create something like a spacer, uh, let's call it a space of six points. So you do, you create a new marker. I won't, normally I'd put this to something like one if I was gonna maximize, but if I just put this down to like six point star, six point font size, and I would make this one point just to literally make it almost invisible. But let, let me just make it at six points, just so that we can see it for the purposes of this video. And that's what it's doing there, okay? So and it's put it up here on the ribbon. So if I now, make that one the same like that, that one the same, then what we can do is we can actually just jig these a bit more like so. Okay, that gives us a bit more room. But again, you're gonna to have to play about with this. And then we can get rid of them like so. But what's important, and which I've just done, is the anchor is in the top left there like so. And this is for all of these boxes, okay? So the anchor's in the top left like that. We've got this set up. That's pretty much mimicking our table setup. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the whole page like so, put my cursor at the bottom, and I'm gonna insert a page break. Control enter, or you can do insert page break like that. And then I'm gonna paste again, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to get these aligned, um, but you need to stop here because the way these text boxes work, now what we do is we, Left click in the top left, left click, like so, delete the text, okay? Now we want to select all again, like so. Now if you want to do it with a mouse, you can, or you can do control shift um, down arrow with the, on the keyboard. Then we copy again, put in a page break. So I don't think I copied it. Let me just use the, the arrows like so, and then paste, and paste, and then you can just carry on pasting like so, okay? Now, depending on how large your documents are, Joshua, you might want to put in 20 pages, 30 pages, however many you want. Now, I've just put in 36 there, okay? Now, there is a little bit of manual work to do now, but the, the reason why we do this in Word, it's a lot easier to take these out than it is to put them in, all right? So, this is the reason why I put all of these in now. Now what we need to do is, we select the top left, left click on the, to select the box, be careful not to nudge it, shape format, create link, and then we link to the, this one. Then we select the top left, we select the one we've just linked, and then we link to the next one. And we carry on doing that. Now if you want to add this, if you prefer to use the keyboard, right click on Customize um, Quick Access Toolbar, and then under All Commands, just press the D, that'll jump to the first D, and then you can just scroll up until you see Create Text Box Link. Add, and then it will add it across, and then just move it to the top. Now, because we're using we're doing we're doing a number of these linkages. What I do now is I select and then I press the Alt key and then you can see the quick access toolbar number appears. Alt 1 and I link to this one. Alt 1, I link to this one. Alt 1, I link to this one. Right, now, now we're looking good. So let me come back to the first box here and then I paste. 
Okay. So let me just select a bit more there, and then I come down and I paste. Now I've come to the end box here. I can see this is the end box by, if I undo there and deselect, I can see that there's no Pilcrow in this box, whereas there is in this one. So that tells me this, this box here I've now selected as unlinked. But what I can do, in fact, sorry, let me just paste back in. So I'm now pasting. And because it's unlinked, all the text is it's not visible now, okay? But when I do Alt-1 again, and link, Alt-1, and because it's, I'm linking, it's selecting this automatically. Okay? That's what we're doing. I don't know how far I've got. Sorry, this one. And then this one, for some reason, it's not selecting the box now. So just carry on. Alt 1, Alt 1. There we go. That's as far as we've got, okay? And that's what you do. And you'll link through to the end. And then what you're going to do is you'll come back up to the next one, Alt 1. Alt 1, Alt 1, because I'm zoomed out, it's just quite awkward on the mouse, so yeah, it's not, and so on and so forth, okay? So now I come back to my top right box, let me just colour this red, just to show, copy, And that's how it works. And that's how I would advise that you do this, Joshua, yeah? And then, of course, you'll set up your headers and your footers and, and everything else. Okay, and then we've run out there. So, Alt-1. Alt-1. If you wanted to jump, not that you would, but... There we go, and that will jump down there, and that one will jump down there, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, when I start deleting, or you start deleting text from above, that's what's going to happen. It's going to remember the links, it's going to bring it all through like so. Okay, that's basically what you need to do. And then once you set this up as a template, and let's say you work out that you only need, you know, this number of pages, then all you need to do put your, find that Pilcrow there like so. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom out so you can see the effect now. Control Shift End and then Delete. And that's why we put them in before, that's why we set it up before we actually, it's easier to take out from Word very often than it is to put stuff in. Okay, hope that helps.